Alrighty, well, now we come to Batman and Robin, the second of the Joel Schumacher directed Batman movies. Said to be one of the worst movies of all time, and the uh, and the film that single-handedly buried the Batman film franchise for a whopping eight years. A lot of people, especially especially fans of the character, really hold a lot of hostility to this move towards this movie. And all I can say, if you want my honest opinion, is. This movie is awesome. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not even kidding. This movie is fantastic. It is so much fun to watch. Not because it's good. No, it, it's horrible. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think everyone has that movie that they like to watch where where um, it's so bad it's good. I, I am very much under the belief that this movie falls under the category of so bad it's good. Maybe it's because I was never really that invested in the other movies up to this point. Maybe it's because I'm just some kind of sicko. <laughs> um, maybe it's my dark sense of humor, but I really like this movie. Um, in fact, when I bought it, I didn't I didn't just buy the DVD. I bought the two disc special edition DVD just to see what was going on in, in these people's heads as they were making this movie. Um, so yeah, I, I'm proud to admit, <laughs> um, I don't know how proud I should be of this fact, but <laughs> I'm proud to admit that I own the two-disc special edition of Batman and Robin. Um, Alright, so, like I said, it's the second Joel Schumacher Batman movie. Um, Batman and Robin are, are uh, tasked with stopping this new, this new big bad villain in Gotham City who's robbing a bunch of, uh, who's stealing a bunch of diamonds for, uh, for some mysterious purpose. This villain is called Mr. Freeze. He cannot survive outside zero, te outside sub-zero temperatures, and he uh, he has this this armor, this insulated armor that keeps him, uh, well, a boosts his strength, and b, or presumably boosts his strength because he throws Batman around several times. But but he has this freeze armor that that uh, keeps his butt, that keeps his temperature very very low, otherwise he would die. And uh, and he also has this freeze cannon who that can uh, basically turn anyone into an icicle. <laughs> okay. In addition to that, in addition to that, you've got uh, Poison Ivy, who was this uh, who's this this uh, botanist, I think, botanist slash uh, crazy scientist. I I don't know. She. She uh, she got into she was uh, double crossed by by her uh, boss and <clears throat> and the, she was exposed to these chemicals that basically turned to turned her into this uh, plant woman. She has the powers of seduction. She can single handedly seduce any man that she comes that she comes across. She has po um she, her kiss is poison. Um and in addition. And in addition the same mad scientist who created who created her, albeit accidentally, also purposely created a super soldier named Bane, um, who now does her bidding. Um, and if you're thinking that this is going to be the Bane, the Bane from the comics, the very intelligent Bane, you are sorely mistaken. Really, I mean, he, he basically just goes, Bane! And soon these three villains team up, and Batman and Robin have to stop them. Um, they have to deal with with, with um, the visiting of Alfred's uh, niece Barbara, who will eventually become Batgirl. Uh, they have to deal with the fact that that uh, there's some tension between them, specifically regarding equality and you know what it really means to be partners and blah blah blah. Um, Although the only plot line I could actually take seriously in this whole movie is the plot line revolving revolving around Alfred and how he's dying of this uh, the same disease that Mr. Freeze's wife is dying of. What a coincidence! Uh, okay, so so right away the acting the acting is just so corny and goofy and over the top. 
Um, George Clooney is probably the only... Uh, George Clooney seems oddly self-aware of the kind of movie he's in. He honestly seems ashamed to be there because he phones it in as Batman. He does not even attempt to disguise his voice. Um, he uses the exact same voice for Batman as he does for Bruce Wayne. He just he just plays George Clooney, um, which isn't bad normally. But um, but as as Bruce Wayne, he is just boring. He's 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 not unlikable as Bruce Wayne. He's just boring because there's just no mystery to this guy um, so George Clooney he like I said he just looks kind of embarrassed to be there um, especially given especially given the uh, very goofy looking bat suit design but I'll get to the design of this movie later um, Chris O'Donnell he is they they boosted his whininess in this movie I mean he he really is the pre-Anakin Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, because because he's he spends literally literally about eighty to ninety percent of his dialogue in this movie consists of you know of you know you couldn't stand maybe the poison ivy wanted me and not you. What I want a Robin signal in the sky. I'm not as big as Batman. Blah blah blah. <laughs> um, he's not quite as irritating as Anakin Skywalker, but. But you just really get the sense that this is just some little kid whining. He, his complaints don't really seem appropriate to his age. He looks like he's in his twenties, and he he whines like a teenager. Uh, <laughs> Alicia Silverstone as Barbara. She's not Barbara Gordon in this. She's uh, Barbara Wilson, I think. She's just Barbara. Alfred's niece. They, I guess, to better connect her with with uh, with the Bat family, as it were, they changed her her uh, paternal figure to Alfred instead of uh, instead of Gordon. So, Alicia Silverstone, she honestly just looks stoned throughout the throughout the whole movie. I'm not just saying that because of her last name, Silverstone. Really bad joke. Maybe I watched this movie too much, um, but she honestly just looks stoned. I mean, there is just no initiative behind her voice. She just looks like she's about to fall asleep. Um, every single line of dialogue out of her, she she sounds, she looks and sounds like she's on some something. I don't know what, but she sounds like she's on something. Um, and the whole Batgirl thing is completely shoehorned in at the end. Um, she doesn't really have very good chemistry with Michael Goff. Michael Goff is probably the only actor here who doesn't completely embarrass himself um, as Alfred. He probably gets the most screen time he's ever had as Alfred in this whole series. And he's and he's fantastic. He's Alfred and he's he's like I said, the scenes between him and and George Clooney as Bruce Wayne, when they're kind of reflecting on, on how much they've been through together and and reflecting on their uh, their father their sort of a surrogate father son relationship. Was honestly the only the only points in the movie where I was actually invested in 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 the drama of the of the scene. The rest of the rest of the movie is just it makes it makes the nineteen sixties Batman series look subtle. Well, maybe that's exaggerating it a little bit, but it's it surpasses the corniness of the sixties series, and this is the late nineties. Okay, this is supposed to be the same Batman. From, from Tim Burton's original Batman, who people were afraid of, people didn't really know who he was. Um, no one's afraid of Batman in this. Um, he's, he, he and Robin are appearing at this, uh, this auction, this, this uh, public uh, gathering at this jungle-themed club. I don't even know what the... Okay. <laughs> Uma Thurman is god-awful in this movie. She's... Um, Taking away the fact that I think she is completely miscast as Poison Ivy, um, her performance, her performance honestly seems like she's sick. She's, um, it se sounds like um, I don't know what she was trying to do here, where, but she, the kind of over exaggerated, uh, almost cartoonish um, seductions that she does here, sound like really, sound like parodies of sound like really bad parodies of Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Um, I mean, Uma Thurman is just so over the top in this. Um, it's like, one, 
like when she's a when she's a scientist when she's uh when she's still meek little Pamela Isley and she's talking to uh, her boss her who's this the most stereotypical mad scientist ever I'll get to him later because he was awesome um, she's she's talking to him she's she says when I get through with you you won't be able to get a job teaching high school chemistry do you hear me you psycho <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, smooth. And Bane, there is no performance for Bane. I mean, he just kind of stands there um, a lot of the time go, going, Bane. Um, and occasionally he says something else. Like Poison Ivy said, we'll say enough monkey business we have work to do and he's and he says monkey work sounds like a spoof of the incredible hulk that's the thing with a lot of these performances you don't honestly think that these actors are are taking these characters seriously which they probably weren't um and of course you can't talk about this movie without talking about arnold schwarzenegger as mr freeze again totally miscast um i don't know where they got the idea to hire arnold schwarzenegger i can only assume um, it was because it was because he was this really big star in the 80s and 90s. It's kind of like the thought process that went through hiring Jim Carrey as the Riddler. Um, only Arnold Schwarzenegger, in my opinion, is so much more enjoyable to watch. Because, yeah, he's kind of being that... A lot of the time, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays these really super serious roles. Here, he's just completely... He completely throws caution out the window and just goes complete campy. Every single... About 95% of his dialogue consists of ice puns. <laughs> what you have heard about this movie is is no exaggeration. I'm I'm serious. Most, if not all, of his well, not all of it. Some of some of the time he he says something that's not related to ice. But seriously, <laughs> every, almost every single line out of his mouth has something to do with has something to do with ice or freezing or 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 something along those lines. He's He's like, cool party, freeze well, let's kick some ice, ha, ah. revenge, allow me to break the ice, my name is Freeze, learn it well, for it is the chilling sound of your doom. Oh my god, this movie, um, and one of the... And one of the most uh, underappreciated performances of this movie, in my opinion, is John Glover as Poison Ivy's boss, um, her her mad scientist boss, Doctor Doctor Woodrow, who, again, is a comic book character who is nothing like his his counterpart from the comics. He's played by John Glover, like I said, and what's what actually had me kind of uh, distracted at first was because is that uh, John Glover previously voiced the Riddler in in a few episodes of Batman the Animated Series. Which is not the only thing they steal from, from that show, by the way. Um, but seeing John Glover just, John Glover just goes completely over the top in this. Um, I never watched Smallville, so I don't really know how he did as Lionel Luthor. But I do know that he is fantastic in this. In the worst way possible, because he is... He is having fun as playing this completely stereotypical mad scientist. Um, he's like, fellow maniacs, I present to you Bane, Bane of humanity. I could respect your opinion. He's talking to, to Dr. Isley at this point after she rejects uh, joining him. He's like, I could respect your opinion. Sadly, I'm not good at rejection. I'm afraid you'll have to die. <laughs> oh, I'm not really giving much of an objective review of this movie. The performances are all awful, except for Michael Goff. Um, and at certain times, George Clooney, when he's acting with Michael Goff. And anytime he's acting with anyone else, he's horrible, but... <laughs> But um, when he's acting with Michael Goff, he, he actually, he's actually not too bad. Um, 
And I'm not saying that like I hate George Clooney. I don't really hate any of these people, or at least uh, most of them. I'm not really an Alicia Silverstone fan or an Uma Thurman fan, but, you know, you know, I don't, I don't mind Chris O'Donnell. I don't, I don't mind George Clooney. I don't mind, uh, I don't mind Arnold Schwarzenegger, at least as long as he's in the right role. Um, I don't buy him as a scientist, not in the least. But but they steal the the Mr. Freeze's uh, suspend an ant, like terminally ill wife plot from Batman the Animated Series. On one hand, I say I say, well, if you're going to steal something, you might as well steal from the best. Um, but on the other hand, Freeze's very campy demeanor kind of clashes with with what they're kind of trying to do um, by by giving him this tragic backstory of the terminally ill wife. So. So yeah, even even in this movie's <laughs> this movie is just so poorly made <laughs> from especially from a script standpoint. I mean, Akiva Goldsman, I, I believe the guy's name is who wrote this. Um, don't ever let him write another Batman movie because he they don't call this the franchise killer for nothing. This is uh, exactly the opposite of what people wanted to see, and. You can you can definitely tell that it was made for a lot of money. I believe the budget was about a hundred, a hundred and forty million dollars. It shows. I mean, the sets, the sets are pretty sizable, and and a lot of the costumes are are pretty uh, are pretty flashy. But the thing is, the thing is, it's keeping with the very campy and cartoonish feel of the movie. And this actually ties into something that I heard about on uh, by watching the two disc special edition and listening to the commentary. Is that is that the primary mindset for a lot of the designs in this movie was to sell toys. That was the primary goal. Um, a lot of the sets look completely over the top, just like the performances. They are. They look... Uh, I believe the word that Gene Siskel used to describe this movie was uh, overproduced, and uh, yeah, yeah, that about sums it up. Or at least sums up the set, the set design. I mean, I mean, Gotham City is still the kind of neon light show that it was in Batman Forever, except, again, it's taken to the next level. Um, there are so many goofy-looking sets in this movie um, that would that would even make, put the 60s series to shame. Again, it's it goes beyond the camp value of the 60s TV show, and that's probably why a lot of people don't like this movie. Or I shouldn't say don't like this movie. That's probably why a lot of people hate this movie with the fiery passion of a thousand suns. I obviously do not share that opinion because I really like this movie because of because of how bad it is. Um, I was entertained by it. Again, maybe it's just because I'm really sick. But but if I have one legitimate complaint that actually detracts from the overall so bad it's good fun of the movie, it's that it's a little bit too long. This movie is about two hours, a little over two hours, and uh, honestly, I could have probably trimmed 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes out of it. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. But going, going back to the set design, it's not just the set design that, that seems cartoonish. Literally everything, everything from the, uh, from the, from the uh, multiple vehicles that Batman has, which completely eliminate any idea of stealth. The uh, <laughs> the Batmobile has this kind of nuclear neon light show going on in its in its hood. Um, <clears throat> the costumes are also are also very colorful. But, um, they even change costumes toward the end to these uh, to these to these bat suits with these. They almost look like silver armor. This this these silver lined bat suits, and I said. You can get silver silver costume Batman for for uh, for five dollars more. Each sold separately. It really did look like a lot of the like a lot of the costumes. And it's not just the heroes. The villains look like uh, look like action figures too. I mean the poison. Even one of Poison Ivy's lines. This had to be intentional. Even one of Poison Ivy's lines. She's like, "I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's why every Poison ag Poison Ivy action figure comes complete." with him, and she points to Bane. Um, that had to have been intentional. That, it can't be a coincidence. With all of the, with all of the action figure-esque designs of this movie, and again, the action figure, um, market being, 
being a uh, a recurring goal in the minds of the filmmakers. That cannot have been accidental. <sighs> but yeah, I, I just really love this movie. Um, for all the wrong reasons. I do not love it because of any kind of legitimate merit. Really the only really the only actual good scenes um, and scenes that are handled well and scenes that actually draw you in, at least in my opinion, are the scenes between between uh, Clooney and Alfred, Michael Goff. Because those those actually almost manage to tear at my heartstrings when you when you come down to the idea of Alfred possibly dying, which in hindsight kind of uh, raises the problem of of an inconsistent tone because you have all these goofy things going on in the field and then go back to Wayne Manor and find this very depressing scenario of Alfred dying. They don't linger on it that much, so it's not really that uncomfortable, but it's, it's still prominent enough to to raise a few questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can definitely see why a lot of people don't like this movie. Um, I can definitely see why the Batman series needed to be rebooted. I'm usually not one for reboots or remakes, especially in this day and age where everyone seems to be doing it. But after this, there had to be some type of overhaul or massive change if the Batman series was going to live on. Uh, because really the old series, this, this very much killed the killed what the old series had initially tried to accomplish with Tim Burton's first two Batman movies. And those had their goofy moments too, but nothing to this scale. Um, I got a kick out of it, That, but again, that may be because of my own personal reasons, you know, not really having been a huge fan of the other Batman movies up to this point. Um, maybe I just got the joke, or maybe I just took it took it all as a joke more than more than a lot of other people. Maybe I just expected much less um, from these guys than a lot of other people, but uh, yeah. Next up, we have we have the uh, the Renaissance of the Batman movies, as I like to call them. Yeah, Batman and Robin. If uh, if you want to know if you'll like it or not, just completely disregard any kind of real emotional investment and just take it as a comedy and I think you will enjoy it more that way if at all